So today we've just got a couple more tests to do on the mic preamp board. Uh, this time we're actually going to connect to the uh, proper output terminals here, proper line outs uh, driven by the transformer here, rather than the uh, meter output that we connected to last time. And uh, the main thing I want to do today is to see if we can uh, we can tweak up the uh, the negative impedance drive circuit that uh, tries to minimise the uh, distortion in the uh, the output transformer there. So let's get to it. Okay, so here's the output stage of the uh, mic preamp. In our first round of testing, we were just taking the signal from the meter output here, which, as you can see, just uh, actually is a buffered output um, from the uh, output transformer primary. Um, let's look at the transformer there. You see that uh, we've got four um, split windings, uh, split to primary and secondary. And the way we've wired this up, we've got the primaries in parallel and the secondaries in series. So that effectively is a, a one to two step up. Okay. Now, um, if you recall from um, the previous video, um, we, we did make one uh, adjustment to this stage, which was to uh, eliminate the DC offset at test point one. And that was by adjusting resistor R39 here, which as you can see, voltage divider there, cap to keep it nice and clean. So that sets that DC offset here. Okay, so this op amp and this buffer here, as you can see, that buffer sits within the, the feedback loop of the op amp here. So that helps eliminate some of the distortion from that buffer chip, because they're not that clean, but uh, within the feedback loop, that should be quite nice. Um, however, there is one feature of, of, of this output stage design, which really is quite unusual. And it's all to do with what's going on here, particularly R45, I think I mentioned this uh, in uh, one of my previous videos. Um, this is a technique for eliminating distortion in the output transformer and it's th through the judicious application of positive feedback. And if that doesn't scare you, nothing will. So the critical issue here is R45 here, which has a value of 9.1 ohms. Now, if you look, this is actually between the transformer primary, or the two paralleled transformer primaries, and ground. So whatever current is flowing through the transformer primary is flowing through R45. So the voltage drop across R45 is pretty much the voltage drop across the transformer primary. So if we were to add however much that voltage drop was in here by applying it to the, uh, the positive input of this op amp, then in theory, we can eliminate a lot of the distortion caused in the output transformer. Of course, we can't do this DC couple. That's the reason why this capacitor here is, it's about uh, 220 mic, I believe, something like that. It's an electrolytic, it's fairly big. But of course, if we did that um, with DC, uh, it would just get completely out of hand. We'd say, oh, we've dropped, you know, I don't know a couple hundred millivolts across there. Oh, we'll add a couple hundred millivolts in here, but then we go, oh, we've dropped even more, and then just ran around the course, you just hit the power rail, and that'd be it. So no, it's, it's only done in, in the AC domain. And it's a, very, it's a very powerful technique, but it's also fraught, of course, because it involves applying positive feedback. Now, I said that um, this, uh, this value here should be the same as the resistance of the transform primary. Of course, it's, um, well, rather the two parallel transform primaries in this case. Um, and that's true if the amplifier has unity gain. Now, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? However, what this also means is that by making small adjustments in, in the gain of this amplifier here, um, we can make adjustments for a slight mismatch between this resistance here and the resistance of the transformer primary. 
and that works quite well. So that's one of the reasons for this trimmer here, R35. Now, it gets a bit more complicated than that because this here, the resistance of the transformer primary, it's a very long piece of copper wire. So the thermal coefficient of resistance of copper is about 0.4% um, per degree C. It's uh, positive, I believe. So you can see that the whole thing is very temperature dependent. I mean, we really need this, the, the, the match between these two to be very close indeed. And it, we can see 10 degrees C, we've got a 4% change in, in that resistance there. Uh, it's, it's gonna be very tricky. Now, there are various ways of doing this. Um, I believe that uh, Audio Precision used this technique for the output transformer of uh, one of their analyzers, and, and their trick was to get the uh, transformer custom made with an extra winding, which is like a, a non-inductive winding, I guess uh, some kind of back and forth way of winding it so that effectively uh, the inductance cancels out, um, such that it's a very long piece of copper wire, it's at the same temperature as the uh, transformer primary, um, and its resistance will change uh, with temperature uh, in the same way. And that's, that's a good technique. So my trick was to use this thermistor here um, as a, a part of a, a network of resistors here, which are setting the gain of this op amp here. So if I've done my calculations correctly, then if we tweak up R35 in order to get minimum distortion, um, then that should track reasonably accurately um, to the temperature induced changes in the resistance of the transformer primary. That's what I'm hoping. Now, there's a few, few things I'm concerned about. Um, I don't know if I, I've, R35 I think is 1K at the moment. Um, I'm hoping there's enough range to be able to find that optimum point. Um, with this technique, you would be best to, to um, err on the side of less positive feedback, of course, rather than more. But there's a certain point where when you get it just right, where the, uh, the, the distortion dips away uh, quite dramatically. So I'm hoping we can find that. Um, and I'm hoping that our thermistor will allow us to keep it at that optimum point. But you can see that uh, the, uh, the possibility exists for low frequency oscillation because of this, uh, this positive feedback being applied. Okay, well, let's go test it. So the first little test I'm running here is just to uh, apply a 20 hertz sine wave, and I'm just checking that the output's nice and clean, and we're not getting any of that uh, weird stuff that we were getting last time around. Um, so that's 12 odd volts RMS output at 20 hertz. Uh, still looking pretty reasonable. So that's a uh, 20 odd kilohertz sine wave at the uh, somewhat alarming output level of uh, 10 volts RMS. That seems to be coping quite nicely. Okay, so that's a bit of a torture test. That's applying a 20 kilohertz square wave. And we are seeing just a, a few cycles of, of ringing there. Okay, so I've just uh, positioned some cursors there just to try and measure the, uh, the frequency of that ringing. And it looks like about 230 odd kilohertz. But I'm not unduly worried by that. Um, that's fairly well damped and it's well out of the audio band. And that really is a torture test, uh, hitting it with a square wave like that. So that all looks fine. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're applying a uh, 20 hertz sine wave at uh, 10 millivolts RMS. We've got the gain running flat out and we're having a look at the resulting spectrum. Now, 
uh, I've got the analyzer set to calculate the total harmonic distortion um, and you'll see on the uh, third harmonic there there's a little peak marker there we're seeing some uh, 50 Hertz hum this being Australia but as you can see that's the level of uh, third harmonic we're getting uh, with uh, 20 Hertz being pushed out at some absurd level um, so I'm amazed in fact at how clean that is um, so my idea is to adjust the uh, trim pot for the, uh, the uh, positive feedback which which is R35 I believe and uh, try and uh, minimize that distortion but uh, at the moment uh, I'm almost too frightened to touch it okay so ultimately that was somewhat inconclusive um, didn't seem to note a lot of effect on the uh, amount of distortion uh, by adjusting R35 however uh, on what I did end up doing was uh, changing the uh, fundamental frequency down to 12 Hertz I did go 10 but I decided to make it 12 so that the uh, 50 Hertz mains hum there would not um, be counted in the harmonics and uh, push the level as hard as I could without it clipping and even then um, we're still getting pretty impressive um, THD measurement there around about minus 67 minus 68 dB okay just as a final test we've just uh, done a, a frequency sweep from 10 Hertz to 100 K and as we can see here we're looking at a quarter of a dB per division so we're less than less than half a dB down at 20 Hertz there and we're well and truly flat um, maybe uh, an eighth of a dB down or so at 20k which is let's do that with a marker even uh, over here there we go anyway a bit inconclusive on the distortion adjustment but nevertheless thanks for watching